thanks for tuning in. Disclaimer, I am not affiliated with Korg in any way. Just a big fan for years. Uh, pardon the Band-Aids. You know, it's the rock and roll lifestyle, I guess. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, is the Korg New Tech, New Tech NTS-2 oscilloscope kit. Um, I've been wanting one of these for a while. It's been out for a couple of years, I think. It originally came with a book, which... It no longer does. I had to get the book separate, but it's all good. Totally worth it as well. The book is. Yeah, I'm excited about this because uh, I've had this old uh, Tektronics TDS 102B oscilloscope for years that I got in college, and uh, it's not color. This is color. So, uh, and the screen's not much bigger than what's on this. So let's get right into the fun of opening this thing up for the first time. All right. Cool. Let's see what we got in here. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Look at that. Manual. Sweet. Nice little doodads and whatnot. No soldering required. I'm sure you guys have all seen other videos online by now. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Well, that's pretty straightforward. To the point. Not sure, I guess it's the safety stuff. Put that right over here. Okay, let's just go right on ahead and uh, take this thing out and start looking at it. I wonder if I have to uh, ground myself. Like, uh, I should probably read the manual. I haven't seen a lot of other people seeming to uh, worry about this too much, but when you handle electronics like this, you want to be careful not to touch stuff because electrostatic discharge can screw things up pretty bad. So I'll just be careful, I guess, and try not to touch any of those uh, any of those things. And so I guess uh, the way this works is we just snap things off. This looks like this is the control plate. I'm putting all this stuff together later. Come on, get out of there. All right got here very cool okay all right then well let's go ahead and uh let's put it together we've got the uh i need some scissors i don't lose any of that those scissors over here Okay, I guess the first thing to do is just go ahead and start snapping pieces off. Hopefully nothing breaks there. That'd be terrible. All right, let's see. Yeah, ooh, that was gratifying. Ooh. Let's do this one first. See what they mean. I heard people say this is a little, a little scary. God, that is actually pretty solid. Just like some kind of plastic. Am I supposed to pull that off? Okay. Nice. Well, that is that is cute. That is super small. It's like Barbie sized or G.I. Joe sized. Need a little bit more control. Much better. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's just go ahead and get this thing on. Eventually, I'm going to pull out my original 1973 Mini Korg 700. Test this out on that. It seems fitting to test the Korg oscilloscope on Korg's very first synthesizer. And uh, 
kind of great timing because I just released an updated version of the uh, original Mini Korg 700S. It's called the 700 FS. I've got the original without the uh, the top panel controls. You'll see in the video. Ooh, cute little feet. Cute little baby Korg feet. There we go, moment of truth. Nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna bring out my uh, original Mini Korg 700, and uh, we're gonna put this thing through its paces a little bit and uh, have a little bit of fun testing that out at the same time. So uh, be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I've got my original Mini Korg 700. This thing came out I think in 1973. Yeah, I got this in uh, some rundown pawn shop out in the middle of nowhere in Missouri. Got it for uh, 125 bucks, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, the guy was asking 150 and I plugged it in and I was trying to play it and I'd never seen one before. I couldn't get any, any kind of sound out of it. I was messing with the knobs and I just could not get it to sound. The light came on, but it nothing came out. Like we plugged it into an amp and nothing. And I'm like, hey man, this thing obviously doesn't work. Um, you knock like 25 bucks off of it, you know, I'll take it. And uh, you know, I mean, I had a, some idea of electronics. <laughs> I figured there's something I could probably do to fix it. Maybe something easy, but 125 bucks, you know, went a long way back then, a lot more than it does now. Anyway, he agreed, and uh, here it is. I um, I haven't turned this thing on in in years. I don't remember the last time I turned this thing on. I've just had it in storage because uh, I've been wanting to refurbish it at some point. You know, the knobs are pretty bad. They're staticky. They're just they're terrible and really hard to to move. Anyway, I'm gonna do a video about this separate. So. Moving right on, I just really wanted to try out. Really just wanted to try this this thing out. Ooh, sorry about that. It's gonna have to. Ouch. I really just wanted to try this thing out. Test the uh, the cord oscilloscope on it. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Ooh, that's not good. Ooh, I'm getting sound. Plug this thing in, don't I? Yeah, let's give it a try and see what happens here. I don't think I've ever put this thing through an oscilloscope. The Korg 700. I don't think I've ever even tested it, honestly. So this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be fun. So um, all right, let's try this thing out and see what it looks like on the scope. Okay, so. Uh, Definitely the higher end looks more and more like more and more like a triangle the higher I go. Yeah, there we go. Kind of makes that triangle do a little hip shake. Shake it. Okay, so let's try a square wave. Yeah, that's uh, That is one funky looking square wave if I ever saw one. Sawtooth, there we go, that looks pretty spot on. Ooh, oh. What's that? That's the saw, <laughs> okay.
Very nice. Okay. I didn't even tune this thing. I guess I should probably tune it and see how that works. Let's see. Uh, look at that. It is perfectly in tune. Now that is a testament to Korg's amazing engineering. Even way back in 1973. That is spot on. I could, cannot get any better. And of course, I could pitch it. Over here, I've got a pitch slider for the 700, but it was like perfectly on and there's no indent there so I must have tuned this a long time ago uh, or I must have and it, and it stayed in tune this whole time in storage look at that 16 feet 8 feet hats off to you core this is one lasting piece of technology um, really quick, I wanted to show uh, the difference between what this does and say like a traditional oscilloscope, in case anyone's curious. Um, I don't have the best one, as you'll see, but it uh, gives you kind of an idea of uh, the differences that you can see in these things. So I'll be right back and I'll show an example of those. All right, welcome back. Yeah, so this is uh, kind of the last leg of my uh, unboxing video kind of turned into more than just an unboxing video as you'll see i flip it on here it takes about five minutes for it to fire up it's certainly longer than the new tech but one thing that's uh, immediately obviously different between these two is that this is not color this is uh black and white god it's still booting up that's crazy <laughs> Go ahead and tune this Behringer cat. Nice. Um, one of the nice things about this is it's got an auto set. If I just hit auto set, it does its calculation and it determines the right vertical and horizontal settings to see the full waveform, which is really nice. And then of course, you know, just like, just like this one, you know, we've got uh, seconds per division. So if you want to get a more zoomed in shot, same thing with this one. Yeah, so let's check out some of these real quick and just see. Uh, we've got a hole, oh, there we go, yeah. Very nice. I mean, the nice thing about this, though, is it's it's going to be a lot easier for me to pull this thing out and plug it in than it is this thing. And obviously, that startup time, you know, uh, that's that's, and of course, you know, just this is not meant for audio signals, as you can see. I have to, you know, this is a really bad uh, hack job just to get it working. But I had to like basically split out a a, a quarter inch just to get it running. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is going to be a lot more convenient. Like I hardly ever fire this thing up anymore just because it's. You know, it's a process. I mean, if I really need it, sure. But a lot of times when I'm on my computer, I can just use an oscilloscope on that as well. So I don't really have as much of a need for a hardware one, but this is gonna really be helpful for that because I won't have the uh, the software plug-in oscilloscopes available. Yeah, digging it quite a bit actually. This is uh, super cool. It disappears. The disappearing waveform. All right. Well, one last thing I'm gonna do before I uh, close it out is uh, I was gonna I'm gonna see if I can find a knob. It's gonna probably look really stupid, but you know, just to get a little bit more uh, control, maybe um, might be kind of cool to put another knob on there. So let me see what that looks like real quick, and uh, yeah, I'll be right back. There you go, folks. Uh, this is the Korg New Tech NTS2.